Yep. Yeah. All right. He's like, you're going to be on his shot. Yeah, that's not Oh, hey. hey. Okay, <laughs> here. All right, ready? Oh, wait. Where, what? No, no. Are you, I thought you were pointing it to me. I'm, I'm already broadcasting, so. Okay, fine. <laughs> Coordinating two cameras. All right. Good. Good. Anyways, um, hey guys, it's uh, uh, Pez Radar here. Uh, Octus is holding the other camera over here. Uh, we're about to do uh, our San Diego Comic Con broadcast with Rod Ferguson, of course. Our second. Um, it's our second one because <laughs> Rod decided to not be patient and do a bunch of other things, but we're going to do those again and we're going to answer a bunch of questions. And hopefully you guys can hear us because there's some like really loud people. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna switch over to Ron. There's Ron. Hey. Uh, all right. So one of the things we want to show you is uh, some of the stuff we're doing at Comic Con. Uh, one of the new things that just arrived, hot off the presses, if you will, uh, is the gear packs, which are a promotional item we're doing where we're using. Uh, these little five card packs, but there's a pool of 10 it picks from, and uh, three of the cards are randomized, and two, you get a sticker and an avatar item in every one. What's really cool, that it's made by Panini, so if anybody knows the cards, Panini, uh, they're kind of world famous for making cards, and this is like one of the very first promotional packs they've ever made, so it's pretty exciting. So let's just take a look what's inside. It's, it's impossible to open. No. <laughs> Can't and we're here for the next, next four hours. <laughs> this rod is unable to open the pack. Um, all right, so as I said, um, so they each have codes on them. So, so the first one is every pack gets a avatar shirt. So you can you type in the code that's at the bottom. There's a men's and women's shirt there, so two codes. And if you type in the code, um, are these available now? Can, if I type in the code now, will it work? Um, I believe they are. Yeah. All right, well then, there's the code. Yeah, there's, there's the code if someone wants to read the archive. See if that works for you. And done. All so, right. other than that, we have the a sticker in every one. So we're going to be putting this on Pez's uh, laptop shortly here. Yes. Um, so every gear pack comes with the avatar shirts and the sticker. And then we have three cards. And we have a variety of rarities. Uh, and there's a pool of ten. So this first one is an example where uh, in Gears of War 4 we now have emblems. So we have these things that go in the lobby that you can use to represent yourself. And this is the Swarm logo. So again, this is the, what you'll be able to use as an emblem for your character in lobbies and in the front end. Sorry it's a little dark, you guys. Yeah. This room is like, oh, like yeah, sensual. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be anywhere else? Um, and then we have a rare card. I got a rare card. Nice. Ooh. Uh, the dodgeball, win a dodgeball match, get 2,000 XP. This is a good one. It's a lot of XP for one match. So again, uh, you can tell by the color, the green, uh, where we had the green emblem and the blue, you see the difference in colors. Green is common, uh, blue is rare. So we have those two. And then last but not least, a horde bounty. So this is a horde bounty for 5,000 experience. And again, bounties are essentially like boosts. So these are things, that, this isn't a gambling thing, when you, but it is what you do is you say like, hey, I wanna play this bounty, and it stays with you until you actually complete it. It doesn't go away if you fail, but you basically kind of make a bet about what you wanna do. Like, hey, I'm gonna put this card down because I wanna try to do this thing on the bounty. In this case, you're gonna try to uh, complete waves one through 10. Uh, and once you complete waves one through 10, you complete the bounty and you earn the experience if you have it activated. You can only ever have one bounty active in Horde at a time. Uh, same is true for Versus, only you can ever have one bounty uh, at a time. So there you go. There. Oh, and of course the awesome backs of the card. So again, these are promotional items. Uh, actually, I think GameStop will have its own version in terms of they have one special card that they have added to theirs. The, the, are we announcing yep, that? Uh, Vintage Reina. Yep. So Vintage Reina is a uh, GameStop exclusive that you can get through the cards. Um, so that'll be coming there. But uh, again, these aren't for sale. They're just promotional. So uh, anyway, we do a promotional event. Uh, and so if anybody who comes to our panel, we have a panel tomorrow at Comic-Con on Thursday at 2.15. And if you uh, come to that panel, we'll be giving away, everybody will walk away with a gear pack, which is cool. Um, and then we'll also have a bunch of other swag as well. So uh, please come to the panel and check it out. And then after the uh, panel, we actually have a signing. Uh, Liam looks sad. So I, I'll, I'll Facebook feed you just come down. Facebook feed down. No. Facebook we're gonna, feed we're gonna down. We're going to wait one second and Rod's going to do a you? jingle for you. Do a jingle? <laughs> <laughs> Make up a jingle. Go live. What did you What did you do, Liam? I don't know. 
dropped. Okay. Well, I'm going to open another pack. Yeah, you can open another pack. Might as well. Lucky you, Periscope. Uh, hey, look, an Avatar shirt. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, we were giving away the code. So yeah, hey, we're giving away the code. So. Because Liam messed well, up everybody on... I mean, can you actually see it? Uh, yeah. Flash, wait, wait one second. Wait, stay there, stay there, stay there. Just give them a little bit of time to look at it. Okay, and we're good. Um, and then, of course, this sticker. And again, it's three different cards pulling from... Nice. Um, and so we have, this time we have the Phoenix Omen Lancer, again, only available in the Phoenix card pack. Nice. Uh, so that's there. We also have the Outsider logo, because apparently every faction has a graphic designer. I used that joke earlier, so if you're watching again, I apologize. <laughs> uh, and again, it's emblem, everybody gets, an, you can have your own emblem. And... This one is our leak card, so I don't know that I want to show the leak. Do I want to show the leak card? Uh, actually, yeah, but we remember. We're... What? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you sure? Yeah. Okay, so this is a uh, another bounty for versus where you win a match to get 2000 XP, but it's for a, ma a mode we have not yet announced or discussed, so. There's that. That's, there you go. So that's how that leaked out. But yeah. um, it's so it's shh. Don't tell anybody. Um, we also have other cool, cool swag we have. So we're doing these uh, pins. So we've been doing a different pin uh, for each show. We're gonna have another pin for packs when we're there. But this is our Comic Con pin. It's kind of a. Want to say it's kind of gold. Want to say it's kind of an orangey paint, uh, but um, it's a cool looking Lancer pin that uh, always nice on the on the suit jackets. And uh, and so then the other stuff we're giving away is uh, if you show up for the signing that we have afterwards, uh, we're going to be doing a poster signing. So we're going to have the cast and crew uh, there. So we'll have the um, posters there that we're going to be signing, which is the box cover. And for the first 300 who show up, we are going to have the, what? Where'd Liam go? Liam, I don't know where Liam okay. went. So we have these Tony Moore posters that we can, uh, for the first 300 who show up, we'll get a signed poster. So that'll be cool. So yeah, so come down. So again, panels at 2.15, please show up. We have lots of cool swag. And then at five o'clock, uh, we have a signing with our cast and you can get the uh, signed by the cast, you know, cover art. And then if you're in the first 300, you get the cool Tony Moore poster. And so now let's talk a little bit about Nerd HQ. So also at Comic-Con we have our booth. So we're the only Xbox game on the floor and we're going to be able to play actual campaigns. So you get hands-on with campaign. You've seen that got released today uh, to show you uh, playing through a wind flare with Marcus by your side. So if you want to get hands-on with that, come to the show for that. But we also have a present representation at Nerd HQ, which is at the New Children's Museum in San Diego. Uh, and we have uh, 20 banks, 20 machines playing multiplayer, uh, showing off a new map we call Forge, which is a, a cool map where you're able to like, uh, there's a basically a rocket engine that can to toast people while you're trying to grab the boom shot. Um, and so <clears throat> you'll see the staff shirt that's there, the people who are working the, the booth. Um, whose shirt is this? It's so tiny. Um, apparently there's female that size shirt. Female. Uh, so this is the staff shirt in terms of an Hydra 74 to the cool art, uh, the sort of uh, Raven's tip of the spear shirt art. And but then every then the first couple hundred or so that show up at Nerd HQ every day, we'll, have a, we'll be able to get the, the sort of the standard shirt that we'll be have available for people who come and play the demo. So come and play multiplayer, see Forge, and we also have the beta maps there, and they're all new glorious looks. So uh, depending on what's going on there and how quickly your matches go. We we'll get to see the other maps as well, um, and yeah, and so there'll be, and I'm sure there'll be probably physical card packs around there too. So, yeah, so that's kind of us at Comic Con. Did I miss anything? We've got the panel at 2:15. We have the signing at five o'clock. Then we have the Nerd HQ panel mm -hmm. uh, with more surprises yes. uh, that that people can come. We'll have some people there that weren't at the Comic Con panel, which is cool. Um, and what else? Uh, I think we got most of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, just, just so just heads up the panel is tomorrow the comic-con panel is tomorrow so yeah and we and we highly recommend uh, like people who cosplay and things like that to to come out so if you're a big cosplayer or anything yeah like people showing up in costume may receive physical gear packs wink wink um okay so maybe you, bonus ones too. Bonus <laughs> ones. 
Uh, so, uh, you, have, you have some questions. Yes, we do have some questions from the community. So we're gonna go through the questions in the community. I also just remembered the area we're sitting in is about to turn into a happy hour area around five o'clock. So... <laughs> oh, we should probably bail. <laughs> so we should, um, we, well, we, we've got 20 minutes. Um, okay. So we can go through some questions and then we can drink in front of people. Okay. Right. Uh, we, all right, let's see. First question is from Dutchy Live. Will we see exclusive content for places other than UK and Europe? Will we see exclusive content for places, for, for other, places than other, other than UK and Europe? Um, um, uh, yes, actually we will. I, 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 it's all going to go down to um, uh, with, with the Xbox marketing team since they talk to the different retailers in different territories. Yeah, not... We plan on, uh, they plan on uh, making sure that content is available in all the other territories as well. So, yeah, it's more of a channel question. Yep. Uh, will we find out in campaign what happened to Baird, Cole, Anya, and Sam? <laughs> or you can play the game. <laughs> yeah, you can play the game. You guys will find out whatever. Uh, about how many character skins are we looking at for Gears 4? Oh, there's a bunch. I mean, uh, we have, uh, we, you know, a lot of, all of our customization, whether it be weapon skins or character skins, are done through our card system. Uh, and we needed a large enough economy, obviously, to have a card system that made sense. So we've done a lot in terms of weapon skins and character skins. So there's going to be a bunch there. And then as we look at um, opportunities to release more and more. And so in the past, for Gears 3 as an example, like we had this limitation that we could only ever make the skins once. Like we could only, whatever skins we made at launch were the forevermore, all the skins we had. We had no way of adding skins after the fact because the way it was architected. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case here. So one of the things is that as time progresses, we can actually release new skins uh, and, you know, additional skins as, you know, things come up or people, we find cool designs and those sorts of things. So it's not just a fixed limit. Um, there is a guy on our forums named D D. WLR, who is asking questions about Horde and classes and uh, <clears throat> affecting balances with co op gameplay. I will say that we are going to be talking about Horde more here in the near future. So uh, for now, I am actually going to skip that question. I apologize. Lambert Hammer, who is a moderator on our team, or brand new moderator, uh, are the retailer specific skins uh, simply shortcuts and those skins can be earned in game or by physical cards from packs? Uh, no, like that's one of the things that you get into this notion of timed exclusives and things like that. But right now, the the notion of the retail exclusive is where you have to go if you want to get it now, and then at some point in the future it might become available. But those are never like decided immediately. Those are those things that was we look at, you know, uh, how the demand for those sorts of things and, and whether that that program is played out. But um, if you want a specific skin, for example, if you want Vintage Reina, and that's something you want to make sure you have, then I would suggest going to GameStop. But um, yeah, and I think same thing with like Vintage Dell is the currently announced pre-order incentive. I, and we'll probably have some more news on that. Um, but the, the same sort of thing is that you want to go ahead and pre-order if you want to get access to Vintage Dell and sort of complete your vintage collection. Um, another horror question I will pass. <laughs> uh, we always get this question from a guy named Irish Knife, or uh, he, he's, he's one of our Irish gamer fans. Uh, and he always asks, will we see Carmine in Gears of War 4? And I always tell him, he's going to have to play the game. And I'm going to repeat that <laughs> answer for him now. Um, uh, script is asking, II Script is asking, will we learn the origin of the swarm? Uh, I mean, again, it's part of the process of Gears of War 4 is meant to be a, you know, part of that discovery process of what is the new threat. So, I mean... There'll be lots of things that you will discover in that process. Will you discover every little thing about them? Probably not, much like you probably don't know the exact origins of the locusts. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, a little mystery is good. So it's, uh, we'll be trying to kind of walk that line. Uh, question, this actually, uh, Octus behind me might be able to answer this a little bit more. Uh, it's from Lambent Lucky. It says, uh, is there an emblem for playing all Gears titles? Is there an emblem for completing seriously? Or all serious, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is very rare. Uh, yeah, exactly. Emblem for 100% achievements on previous titles, pretty much legacy rewards in some form of lobby emblem or skins. Yeah, I mean, this just what, we're still going through exactly what all the emblems as we're bringing them all in line now. Same thing as we're just finalizing the achievements too. So I don't think every one of those, like one of the things we don't want to do is get too too super exclusive. So we don't want to go down to like 0 0.05, you know, percent of people only get this thing. So uh, we're trying to find a way to be inclusive, but also reward loyalty. So that's something we'll be 
uh, we'll, we're definitely looking at. Uh, will Insane Campaign be read readily available at launch? Yeah, uh, we did a poll asking what people wanted Insane uh, locked at, and you had to earn it by playing through on some other difficulty or that they want it unlocked and uh, all of the, the Twitter poll, everybody, you know, a large, I think it was two thirds of the people, 60% um, of the people wanted uh, it unlocked at launch. So it will be unlocked at launch. You want to start it Insane, you can. So it's going to be hard though. <laughs> Um, it's something we're trying to, it's one of the things we've done, like we noticed that, you know, as you go from one to two to three, the, the difficulty gets it gets easier and part of that is the game, part of that is the number of co-op players um, and just trying to make it more accessible and so one of the things we've been doing is um, sort of balancing the game a little bit back towards Gears 1. You know, Gears 1 didn't have a casual mode, so it didn't have a place for people to go who wanted to play more casually, like it didn't have a true casual. I think casual in Gears 1 was really more like a normal. And so one of the things we'll be doing is trying to differentiate the difficulties more. But what that means is they'll probably, like once you get to normal, especially when you get to hardcore and saying, they'll be a lot more like Gears 1 and harder than they've been in the previous, like Gears 2 and 3. Uh, there are a few questions coming in on Periscope. Uh, one was asking, are you guys going to be at the GameStop Expo? Uh, some of us might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question that came through was uh, related to... Uh, frag planting in multiplayer and wanting to know if frag planting was still going to be in multiplayer after the beta. Yeah, it still is. I think, I mean, it's one of those things that's controversial for some people. Um, some people feel like it's a non-skill thing, but one of the cool things is what we're really doing is we're, we've really separated the notion between what we call core players and competitive players. And so we can actually change things now more than we've had in the past. And so when we look at what the core experience is, what, what kind of experience we want the average player, not, not in the sense of average of skill level, but I just mean the majority of players, how they want to play. Um, you know, we consider that a core experience. And we actually have, what I really thought has been really cool about this particular, Ryan has really worked on this notion of having two different balancing schemes. So what we found is that, you know, when you go to, when we were at PAX East and they did a, a, a weapon balancing play test with the pros prior to their matches, um, they found a lot of differences about how they wanted. They actually wanted the weapons a lot less lethal, which was interesting. And so they, they made them where you had to get a lot closer, and, and, and it was just, it was a lot, you know, it took more work to, to get the kill. And so what we've actually done is we've separated weapon balancing between core and competitive. So, you know, we, we can decide how much we change it. So we can 